Well, hello there, humans, hippies, earthlings, hope you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to channel, I'm Bushra, and today's video is tech tree techs that you need to grind. That's a completely, that's a bad title, right? I understand that's not going to sell a lot of units, it's not going to shift a lot of volume. If you can come up with a better title than tech tree tanks you need to grind, leave it in the comments below. And I'll use it on the thumbnails for the other tanks that I do in this series. But I think it's a good series. It's got legs. We're going to run with it. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel too. Plenty more Tech Tree Tanks, Tankity Mick Tanks, I Need to Grind coming your way. Uh, I'm going to show you some armor profile stuff. I'm going to talk about the stats. And I'm going to show you an absolute crackerjack game at the finish. I think I've got a five tank. Uh, it's a 5v1 to finish uh and it's quite worth the watch very exciting although i'm going to include my voiceover on it and i don't sound that excited i don't know what it is it takes a lot to get me excited these days to make the socks roll up and down anyway watch on the stb1 is the king of tier 10 gun depression tanking uh why is this because it's got a very nice armor profile which we'll have a look at shortly but more importantly it has an absolute ass load an a veritable buttocks load, a cubit by cubit measurement of gun depression. 11 degrees of gun depression is a pretty fancy number for a tank in World of Tanks Blitz. 11 degrees of gun depression is one more degree than most of the top gun depression tanks have, like the FE4202, for instance, has 10 degrees of gun depression. Um, having 11 is right up there with some other legendary vehicles, like the Comet or the Kenny Otsu. Tanks that we're able to like totally abuse and exploit gun depression to the max back in the day, man, if you know what I'm saying, feel what I'm putting down. Um, and because of that, the STB-1 is capable of tremendous feats of hull down fancy. You will see some, I'm gonna show you some clips of the STB-1 just absolutely dogging people hull down. And it's, it's how the tank loves to be played. Of course, like any balancing uh, act with any vehicle, Wargaming gives with one hand and takes away with the other. It doesn't have horrific stats in any way, shape or form. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that in comparison to its peers, its tier 10 medium peers, it has low DPM, low gun handling and low mobility. Now, it doesn't have bad mobility, bad DPM, and DPM meaning damage per minute, or bad gun handling. It's just low in comparison to its peers. And that's how it's balanced. And thank God it does, because let's be honest, if this tank had Leopard 1 levels of DPM, it would be absolutely insane. It's just really, really good as it is. And one of the reasons I'm making this video is I want people out there who really do struggle with ideas on what to aim for at the top of the tech tree to be able to look at this and go, that tank is where I want to be. Because this is very much a tank that you should be aiming for. Its DPM is 3,200, just over 3,200. That's that's on the low side, for instance. So a 50M is 3,360. The Leopard 1 is 3,771. So you're about 16% off there. But that's generally in keeping with gun depression tanks. They suffer with lower DPM than most tanks. It's just how they are balanced. But its mobility is a different thing altogether. It's just got very, very poor terrain resistant stats as I eat a completely unnecessary shell in the date just because I didn't reverse instead of uh, going and just turning and swiveling like a potato. Oh, it could have been a different story. No, this was always a loss. <laughs> I mean, there's six tanks left when I ate that one shot, and there's going to be a lot of tanks racing at me. I want to look at that armor profile in just a second, but you can see me tracking him here and using that strong turret. He can't get the gun down. He doesn't have the gun depression. I do have the gun depressions. And we're going to get one more into the Kranwagen before we get knocked ass over tit. Let's have a look at the uh, armor profile, and then we'll figure it out. Still nearly 5K, and just a nice considered drive on the top of the Castilla Mountain. Doing well. Doing good things. Ah, that coffee's good, baby. Ah, it hits the spot. Let's have a look at the armor profile. And I'll talk you through why this tank is so effective. And we also got a lot of 
block damage there. The uh, If you just push and roll that to the T10 Japanese medium, the only T10 Japanese medium in the game, that's the STB1 right there. And you can see before we switch to the red green, which highlights that even further, the red being the parts that you get a bounce in the E100 firing your AP, that straight away, although there is a turret on the top, uh, a turret on the top, there is a hatch on the top that is a weak point. It's not particularly huge. And you should be taking little snapshots. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. The weak points are either side of the gun. So if you're ever having trouble dealing with one of these things, the, the real aim is to load up the heat and try and shoot the gun. And as people pull backwards and forwards, you'll sometimes get lucky and rail one right in between. But for any tank that's resetting its camo and then popping up and rumbling again, it's difficult to hit. And, and that is a big part of why I love this tank, particularly on maps like Canal, where you can get up high on the medium flake and get real elevation. Wow, is the STB1 a difficult proposition to deal with. Um, your lower glacis is candy floss. Don't don't ever rely on that. Your upper glacis, very, only one strip along the top is strong. For the most part, you're looking at a tank that, whoa, buttocks of, yeah, frail intentions. You can be heshed very hard in the sides and in the back, but this is where you want to be putting it all the time. That squash down turret, just leaning up, leaning down, taking a tap, moving around, never giving them a chance to pre-aim where you're at. Uh, you can see the mobility is not massive. Uh, that's because, as I said before, the, well, I don't know if I did say before, the uh, the terrain resistance stats in the STB1 are terrible. The, hip, the horsepower per tonne, for instance, on the STB1 is 20.5 or so. On the T62A, it's 19 point something. I can't remember the exact figures. Once you factor in terrain resistance stats, I do remember this, the STB-1 goes to 22, and the 62A goes to 39. So that's how important terrain resistance is on this tank. And running these low ridges like this, you can see how you can slowly attrit a team as they start pushing in towards you. And the reason I'm going unspotted here is I'm trying to reset my camo so when I pop, they don't get clear shots. He got me anyway, but what are you going to do? Uh, he had to be had to be donked. Um, it's got great heat pen too. Uh, 300 uh, alpha on your heat rounds, which is nice. I mean, you like that? 300 millimeters of pen to go with it. I mean, it's, when I say great, it's good. It's good. It's good. Good penetration. Same as your Leopard 1 and all that kind of stuff. And your AP works just fine. Low... Shell velocity is a problem a lot of tanks have. Not the STB. Uh, although your dispersion isn't the best, 0.326, again, is the low end of T10 mediums. Like your Leo's 0.272, your E50M is 0.299. 0.326 is high, but you have excellent shell velocity, which means you don't really have to lead targets. And you can still snap people out. Like if you watch this, you can see everything's working. Um, I do have maxed seven stats across the board on my crew skills because I've been playing for freaking ever. Um, this poor old uh, Caro glitch is just like, are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? And that's that's going to go right through your um, the mantlet, either side of the mantlet. That's fine. It doesn't make any difference. You're going to get those sometimes. But you're certainly outputting a lot of damage. And this is the kind of position that you're looking for in the STB-1. And that's the only real negatives about the tank. It's gun depression is to die for. Uh, quite literally, if you ask the Reds in some of these games. And it's interesting too because it's the kind of turret, because it's so low and sexy and sleek, it's just fun. It's just, it's not like you're firing and you're intentionally trying to just stop shots with your big blocky turret like a 50M as we push forward because the Concept 1B has gone behind us. We're like, okay, so we get to choose Concept 1B or 183 and we choose 183, which is probably the mistake, but we got him anyway. <laughs> and then we're back. 
and turning that turret around and yeah it does good things it does very good things you're gonna see a couple of bounces this concept 1b has and that's because we're above him you always want to try and get this tank above the enemy that means when you're above the enemy you're using that 11 degrees of gun depression and you're maximizing the difficulty that they're going to have in actually getting the gun down and penetrating that turret. I'm going to show you a game now that I played, uh, a, well, I think this is earlier this week, or maybe at the end of last week, and it's a monster. Don't go anywhere. I'll show you the game, and then I'll pop in at the end to say farewell and have a little chat. Um, you're going to enjoy it. It's a rip roarer. Sit back, do not adjust your seatbelts, and uh, turn on the stereo. Simulcast on the YouTube. We're going up. The STB is a tank that loves to go hull down. And this is the preeminent spot on the map for altitude. This is where you go if you're going to go up. Um, they've got a light. What is it? Sheridan. And the Badger will probably come up here as well on a TVP. Sheridan might spot inside here, so we're watching for a shot as we go up. Now, it's got nice heat. It's got good all over pen, but I won't be needing heat here. If they come up, they're going to come up and uh, it's going to have a quick scout. It's spotted, so there's someone in the bushes there. Tank. Um, I was just using the turret. I knew I was okay to cross, but uh, what's going on over here? That TVP. TVPs just do the weirdest things. No way around it. They are absolutely horrific. I mean, not, not as a tank. They're a great tank, but people do strange things in them. My TVP's coming back, man. He's coming back. Shows the TVP over the object 704 there just because the TVP is probably a better tank. I'm going to try and give one of the grills as he crosses as well. I mean, this is your typical medium game where you've done the hard yards and gone to the flank, but still, you don't love it because have a look at how our team's going and have a look at, you know, where we are. There's, there's an easy kill there in that ISA, but he's not a strong tank and, uh, we're just spreading our damage out over a lot of different tanks, and that's not really ideal. It's not what you want. Sure as hell isn't what I want to do, but... I mean, we haven't stopped uh, doing our best to... They just, they've died. What do you do in these situations? Well, I wish there was a magic cure for it, but there just isn't. Um, you've just got to keep going and hope you can find some tanks to hook up with and do big damage with. Might be able to clear the 704. Took a big one from the grill, not to be uh, too worried about that. You were going to get hit. There's no way around it. Can't win without it. track there. we have got to get a HE. Oh, that's not what he wanted to see. But that is. And 
now we're just going to work our way through this grill. And I mean, this is a great tank like this. It's so strong hull down. Uh, it's such a, a nice gun. But it's still not an easy tank to win with, you know? I don't know if the grill is going to be ballsy enough to try that. Is he going to do that? I don't think. <laughs> Is it Boeing from Oxo in here? Oh, awesome. Like I didn't feel any pressure prior, but now I don't. Yes, TV. That's one of the OXO boys. Can play too, Boeing. I think he's on my friends list. Five destroyed. Only a first class, because that's what we do in these tanks. We get first classes. I've been doing these videos the past couple of days. They're always first classes. It's pretty freaking funny. Well, there you have it. The STB-1. Um, just a wonderful vehicle. Uh, when I was saying it's not an easy tank to win in there, I meant from that position because it was obviously soft underneath and if the grill was going to sit in the bush, it was going to be difficult. And I did feel bad for that grill because he, you hate being the TD in that position because you've basically got to pick a direction. A good medium driver will make you absolutely blind and pick the direction you think he's going to come from and then you just got to hope that you get it right because if you don't get it right then uh, it's good night, nurse. <laughs> That's the end of it. And he, unfortunately, was looking out. He thought I was going to flank heavy route, and uh, he was looking out through the trees there, and we ended up coming into the spotlight directly behind him, which was perfect for us. Not so perfect for him. That's the STB one, guys. You've got to have this tank in your garage. There's uh, going to be more than just tier tens, by the way, uh, coming up in this little series. There are a lot of tanks I drive that are tech tree tanks that are not tier 10s, um, particularly when I'm platooning with uh, my mates and they're grinding uh, tanks in the tech trees. The next non-tier 10, well, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna keep it a surprise. If you do have an idea about a good title for the video, let me know and we'll, we'll rumble it. Until next time, look after yourself, stay safe on the battlefield and uh, yeah, I'll just, actually, you know what? I'll just, let's just watch this one. Let's watch the end of this one here. Um, I forgot about this. <laughs> it's just a random video. Uh, I don't think there's anything particularly special, but gee, I wish more people played with their medium tanks like this. I've been coming across so many people in Blitz who bitch and moan and bitch and moan, and they're always just so wrong about the way they play the tank. You can see how I'm trying to situate myself in hard cover there and make the Leo 1 kind of pointless so that he can't put his DPM to use. Like, he can't get up here and get into this position and get cross shots back without challenging me. And you can see how we completely wait for our camo to reset, and then we roll forward and we own the spot. And, like, this is stuff that I see so many people get wrong, and it's literally the difference between winning and losing games. I've also seen huge amounts of conspiracy theorists in my comments, not huge, three or four, guys telling me that you get better matchmaking if you pay for the battle pass and all this kind of crap. And I, you know, I had 10 games in this tank yesterday, the STB one, averaged 2,800 and won three of them. And I just think the idea that matchmaking has a special hell for you is probably more indicative about the way you play the game than not. 
Um, I'm not saying you're a bad player. I'm just saying that there is no special matchmaking. I've been to the offices of Wargaming. I've talked to developers and that. They they don't have time for that bullshit, man. They've got a lot of real problems that they've got to get through and a lot of game issues on the timeline instead of just trying to ruin your matchmaking day. Anyway, I hope you enjoy yourselves. Look out for more content coming your way. And uh, as always, stay safe on Z Battlefield. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Until next time, bye for now.